fellow artists, subscribers to Monet Cafe on YouTube, my patrons on my Patreon page, and anywhere else I might share this video, I am bringing you this video. I'm artist Susan Jenkins, by the way, and I'm bringing you this video from an unusual place, my kitchen. Why am I doing that? Because my studio is covered up with stuff. I've been working on a lot of different things and I needed the space. My studio is not very big anyway. But what I'm bringing you today is a highly requested video. I've been really listening to my patrons on my Patreon page. If you're not familiar with that, it's um, my page is patreon.com slash Susan Jenkins. It's a way you can support my channel and also get a little extra content and a little more communication. It's a, more of an intimate group and my patrons actually have been the reason for a lot of my recent videos. I ask polls or get their suggestions and this was so recommended, it was one of the most recommended videos I've had in a while, um, especially from my patrons, which is, you know, we make all this artwork and it's like, what are we gonna do with it? We hope to sell it or uh, display it or put it in a show. And I know I have shared in the past ways to put your artwork in these protective um, clear bags. You know, you can take it to little um, events you might have. It's a good way to uh, ship it. But sometimes we want to actually frame our artwork. And that can get very expensive. I'm sure you're aware. Even if you go to like um, Michael's or some of the framing stores and they have this little thing, they give like 40% off and, and it's still expensive. So I've come up with over the years uh, ways that I can do some of the framing myself and save some money. So that's what this video is about. I think you're gonna have some uh, great information, some money saving tips, and uh, hopefully get some of your beautiful pieces of art framed, ready to display or to sell. All right, let's do this thing. All right, first I thought I would show you what does a professionally framed piece of artwork look like? I actually had this piece framed. Um, I haven't sold this because I like it hanging on my wall. <laughs> so this is a frame that I actually purchased. Uh, it was a standard size frame. What is the size, like 16 by 20? Um, I like to work in standard sizes when I can because you can find frames uh, that you can finish the framing process yourself. So what does it look like? It's got um, this, it's called a dust cover on the back and that's what this uh, paper is that's on the back of the frame to kind of cover up everything that's going on behind here. And I'll show you what's going on behind here in a minute. And then they do a really nice professional job of putting the wire here. And they actually include, I love this idea, they include, if you, if you sell this to a client, they include the hardware to actually hang it. That's a nice little touch, right? Um, then also too, they have these nice little plastic stoppers on the bottoms of it to kind of hold it um, away from the wall. All right, just and they just have that on the bottoms. All right, so now I'm gonna show you what's going on behind here, what tools you need to make your frames look professional like this, and uh, get your artwork ready to go. Okay, here we go. All right, I'm gonna get started here showing you my basket of framing goodies. I've got a basket. Uh, when you have a small studio like I do, you learn a lot of creative storage options. <laughs> And uh, because I don't do this process a lot of framing uh, or finishing the framing of some of my pieces, I need a place to, you know, not have this in the way. So I have a shelf that's up high that I keep all of my framing goodies. All right, time to see what's in my handy dandy framing basket. The first item is the dual driver point driver. It's made by Logan. It comes with the... Uh, way to load the points right here. You basically just pull this back, you load more of the points, and you close it up, okay? So, and this one is about $65, and it comes with 600 points. You have to buy extra, you know, when you're running out. Okay, so it's really, really easy to use. All right, the next item is this tape gun. I couldn't remember the manufacturer for this tape gun. It's called an ATG gun, an adhesive tape gun, but Scotch, um, the company Scotch, makes one of these and and different companies. I found them on Amazon. They range anywhere from $25 to $50. I think more towards the $50 range, and um, they have different thicknesses of tape. I can't remember which this one was, uh, and it wouldn't say on here, right? 
um, it looks like maybe about a half an inch of tape, okay? So, and I keep my instructions in here on how to load it. It's just a good idea. I found it online, how to load the tape dispenser. There's plenty of videos that'll show you how to load one of these tape guns, okay? They're all kind of similar. All right, so there's the next thing in there. And then the next thing, oh, and you can buy these. I think they come like six rolls for around $20. The next thing I have is the dust cover trimmer, the little trimmer that trims the paper off the edges. This one, I couldn't find the name brand. I think the guy who helped me frame it maybe gave it to me, but they have one also made by the Logan company called the Logan Dust Cover Trimmer. It's around $15, okay? And of course you will need some of the brown paper, okay? And I think, yes, they are about $12. It's called dust cover paper. They're about $12 for 30 feet of 30 inches. That's the a general idea of the price. So again, this is not, of course also too, you will need um, some of the wire um, for putting the wire on the backs of them. You will need some of the um, picture hanger uh, hardware and they come, I get things on clearance sometimes. Different sizes obviously are for different weights of how heavy your painting is. Also, they have different gauges of wire if it's a bigger painting. So that's kind of a common sense thing as to how much, um, how thick or how heavy duty the hardware is for that. So that's pretty much the rest of the things that are in my basket here. Okay, so let's take a look at how we're going to approach this. This would be in the example as if you just bought a frame that had glass in it, okay? Both of these. Um, ignore the fact that I already have these little things um, that are called points in here. Normally, they would not be in here, okay? But, and this glass is very dirty, all right? So I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. Now, there are two ways that you can do a pastel painting. Well, there's probably more, but the two ways, standard ways, are to have a mat with your painting. Of whatever color, you know, or to frame your piece not matted, okay? And I prefer not to have a mat. Now, this painting does not fit in here. I mean, it, it fits, but there's space around it. I wish this frame was the right size <laughs> for this painting, but there's space on either side. Um, so, in a perfect world, I would always paint in standard sizes, okay? Um, five by seven, six by eight, eight by 10, 11 by 14. And is the next one 16 by 20, I think. And I know there's like all the different um, A4 and all those sizes too, but uh, that way you can find standard size frames to fit your artwork. Sometimes I don't paint in standard sizes. Now that's the reason why a lot of these frames I'm showing you now are not standard sizes. I'll try to give you a quick story as to why. Back many years ago when I had started uh, really painting and um, getting better, I had a whole lot of artwork and I had someone invite me to do a show. So I knew I couldn't afford to have all these pieces framed. So I found a guy who was really good at making frames and putting the frames together. He was actually very good at picking a frame. Uh, he had a lot of varieties of wood and choices at picking a frame per each piece of my artwork that went well with my artwork. Um, I think it's really neat to find a frame that looks good with your artwork instead of just doing like all black frames, or all white frames. Um, but uh, my paintings were not standard sizes. So this, this is the end result of a lot of paintings that I have sold without the frame. So I've ended up with a lot of these non-standard size frames here. Um, so anyway, I recommend if you can work in standard sizes, this is best to get a standard size frame instead of having to get a framer to make it. Then you're, you know, spending more money again. So anyway, I wish this fit in this because I love the look of not having, now this is very glared right now because I still have the plastic bag behind this so you can't really see the artwork that well. Normally you wouldn't, but I like it without a mat. I think you experience the beauty of the painting more without a mat um, obstructing your view. Now, I know there's different opinions on that and reasoning for that, and that's all, it's fine, whatever your feeling is, but I prefer that. Now, 
Uh, it is advised, there's different trains of thoughts with this too. It's advised not to put your pastel work right against the glass. So I, as some artists say, it's fine, you can do that. But it's best, I think, to use something called spacers. Now, unfortunately, I don't have any with me here, um, but I'll show you a picture in this video of what a spacer is. Do you see how the frame has a little lip right there? That is where a little very thin, it's like made out of plastic, little spacer, you can buy them at framing stores in strips and you can cut them and you literally just cut the spacers, they have a little adhesive on one side, to fit the spacers right in this little groove area. Pretty good too. So when you get that little spacer in there, around there, and you put your artwork down, it's not touching the glass, it's touching the spacer. Again, you'll have a board backing that will fit the actual frame. Um, so that's the way I prefer my in a perfect world scenario is without a mat. But because I had been working with all these non-standard size frames that I have, I might as well repurpose them, right? Um, I thought, well, let me go ahead for this demonstration and for this painting and go ahead and show you um, what this painting would, how it would work in this particular matted frame, because it won't fit, obviously. If I take this mat out, this painting will have glass all around it, you know, exposed glass. So I've got to figure out how am I going to crop this now? Um, and a lot of times it will work. If you have a mat and the painting's a little bit um, bigger than the matted area, you can kind of maneuver it around and find a way that it would um, crop nicely. So I think I'll kind of crop it like that. Yeah, maybe like that there. And, um, and that should work. And also too, let me show you another little tip about the mat. A lot of people ask, um, will the pastel dust fall on the mat? And I heard an expression years ago called, do a reverse bevel, make the bevel on the reverse side. And so I was thinking, I've got to tell the framer to do a reverse bevel. The bevel is just this little um, angle that they have in the mat. Well, all a reverse bevel is, is to flip the mat over, okay? It's not a fancy thing the framer does. It's a regular mat and you flip it upside down. Normally this bevel goes on the front of a piece of artwork. You see the bevel like that. The reason we don't do that with pastel work is if any dust falls, we've literally got a little ramp here for the dust to fall onto that little area, that little white area right there. So a reverse bevel or flipping it over in regular terms, okay, flipping it backwards in there, keeps the dust, it's not gonna fall um, here because the, the mat is against the glass. It's gonna fall down behind it on that bevel that's on the opposite side. So that's a really practical thing to keep your paintings, if you're um, selling them or hanging them yourself, to where you don't have pastel dust that falls down and gets in front of the mat. Okay, so reverse bevel is just flipping your mat over the opposite side. Okay, so I am forced on this demonstration to do a matted piece um, because I don't have a frame that's gonna fit this exactly. Okay, so let's get started framing this. I'm gonna show you all the tools to do that. Okay, so I thought it would be good to dissect an actual painting so we can kind of see what's going on behind the artwork. Okay, this was a piece that got a little damaged on the back. So this is an appropriate piece to take apart. Okay, so this is what's called the dust cover. And I guess they named it that because it kind of protects getting dust in the back of your painting. If it's hanging on a wall, it's not gonna get much dust in it but um, it does kind of protect what's going on behind here. Now, these are called points that are literally the little um, points that go into the frame that hold the mounting board down so it won't wiggle around. And I'm gonna actually take these out and sadly, I cannot find my pliers. My husband does home renovation. We have a garage full of tools, but I cannot find them right now. So I'm using these little scissors to get these little points out. They come out pretty easily. You know, it's not too hard. So I'm just kind of pushing down and pulling them out for now. Okay, now we have our points out and we have our 
mounting board. This is just a foam board that fills up the entire back of the frame, you know, pretty snugly. You wanna cut it kind of um, form fitting to the frame. Okay, so there's the mounting board. Now this was a frame that was done with a mat. So I'm gonna pull it out gently. A piece of art, I should say, with the mat. I have it upside down. And this is a painting that I did that was of a plate of sushi. I love sushi, now I'm hungry, darn it. <laughs> um, but anyway, I wanted to show you, um, this was one that was done by the man who did some of my frames for me many years ago. Uh, and he actually mounted my artwork to a mounting board. Okay, see how it's mounted on there? And if you want a good video of knowing how to mount your artwork, uh, it's best to mount the paper before you paint it, but you can do it if you're very careful after you paint it. But the good video I was gonna recommend is one by Alan Picard. If you just look up Alan Picard on YouTube and mounting, uh, it'll, it'll pop up. He shows you a really great and affordable and kind of easy way to mount your work. I have ways that I do this myself without mounting it to um, with any adhesive and I'll show you that as well. But that's it mounted to a board and then it is taped with a hinge system to the back of the mat. This is taped literally that there's a piece of tape that is taped down on the artwork and then a piece across to hold it more snugly and then a piece across this piece to hold it so that you have a hinge. Now, that again is what goes into the frame and the mounting board. Once again, you see that. Now, I'm going to show you uh, a couple of little things of uh, how to use tools to do this yourself. So instead of doing this one, uh, putting it back together again, I'm gonna show you literally how I cut the board. And again, a little disclaimer, Mine might not be as professional as some would like it. If you're gonna have a piece of art in a show or um, giving to a client and you're just worried they're nitpicky or they're gonna take the back of the painting off and <laughs> you want it just right, I mean, you may wanna consider the professional framer option, but uh, I have ways that I can do it that work for me. Okay, so now, this is the one that has a mat in it already. I'm going to use it with this other painting that I did that doesn't necessarily fit it, but I'm going to crop it, okay? And again, this has the plastic on it that will come off. Okay, so I'm gonna crop this painting to about so, so that it fits in here. Now I need to cut a board that's bigger than this one, okay? Um, bigger than this one to fill up all of this, okay? So I'm going to use another piece of this foam core board Okay, to cut it to fit the back of this. This one's a little messy, but again, I would I take more time to make this look really nice when I'm not just making a video for you guys. Okay, so I've got to cut that to fit that. And, um, but for that, well, actually, I'll go ahead and cut it, but I want to show you, we've got to clean this really good because once you put your artwork in there, you don't want anything in there because you're gonna close it all up. And if you see a little dust speck, it's like, oh man, you gotta take it all back apart again. But let's go ahead and just cut this mat board. I'm gonna show you another tool that you can use for that. All right, so how big is our opening here? It's about 11 and a half inches. So I wanna go just under that because I want this to fit. You don't want it so tight you can't get it in there. So I'm gonna go about 11 and a quarter, just a little bit more, just 11 and a quarter. So I'm just gonna make a mark on my board. Okay, so we have our marks here for how big the board needs to be. How are we gonna cut that? You can't really put it in a paper cutter. It's gonna smush all of this, okay? So I found another neat little tool. This is another Logan product. 
It's called a Logan Straight Cutter, all right? It has a little blade in it. You buy these little replacement blades, okay? And um, it pushes down and cuts the board. And it's got a neat little guide here when you push down to cut, a little guide that you can run along the line, okay? So unfortunately, let me see if I can set this up where you can see it better. All right, I've turned the camera to where hopefully you can see this. This is my edge that I have to cut. I actually noticed I need to cut it inside a little bit more because it's a little bit too wide. But what I do is I put it, normally I'm in my studio and I put it on my table. I put it on a table or something where the edge is, it's just, the line is just over the edge because if you put it way out here and push down to cut, you're gonna bend your board. So you wanna have it pretty close, okay? So there we go. Now, I put my arm down to support it. Here's my little Logan straight cutter. This is that little groove I was telling you about right there that you, you put along the edge of the line um, once you make a cut. But this is where you press down and you go ahead and you kind of get a cut into the board. All right, now I'm just gonna push my hand a little forward. This takes a little finesse, but once you get the hang of it, it's not too hard. I'm going just on the inside of the line, again, because my line was a little too wide. That's why sometimes I make my line a little longer than what I need to cut. So pretty good. I got a little wider right here. Okay, but we got that part done. Now let's do the next one. I won't talk on this one, so hopefully I can do it better. Here's the guide right here, that little guide that I'm following the line with. And I'm kind of pressing, oops, I pressed too far forward there. <laughs> okay. All right, so there we go. So we got a nice cut. Okay, I, I did, that's where I pressed too hard right there. But okay, but that's pretty good. That's good enough for putting in the frame. All right, let's put it together. Okay, so now I have my board, little edges there. Got my board to where it will fit in the spot. Okay, so now if you have um, been using the clear bag system like I do, uh, sometimes I, I always include a little uh, instruction sheet to anybody who buys one of my paintings about how to frame them and also how to get them out of the bag. If, if the painting is too snug, and you don't want to smear it, you can literally just cut the bag off of it. That's what I'm going to do in this case. I'm just going to cut it right off of there. And I'm going to do it from the back so as to be careful. All right, so wasn't that easy. So now I have a a board I can repurpose or reuse again. And I have my painting. And this is one of the ones of the UART that kind of curled up a little bit, okay? <laughs> now, before you frame or put a painting in a frame, it's always a good idea to take the painting outside and give it a good whack on the back, okay? Make sure you hold on to it pretty good up here, okay? Whack it to get all that dust to fall off because a lot of dust does kind of fall off of these things. Okay, so I'm gonna sit that over there just to get it out of the way. Throw this away. I'm also going to clean my surface here that I'm gonna be working on because I don't want um, pastel dust everywhere. Okay, now I want to go ahead and position my painting to where it will fit in here nicely, okay? We know that this is going to fit in here, okay? So that means I've got to get my painting to fit in here where I want it, okay? Before I put it down in here. Now this is what I was saying again about a reverse bevel. With a regular mat, the bevel is normally here, okay, where you see it. Now, the guy who helped me with some of this framing years ago, he knew that this was gonna be on the back side, so that's where he made all his cut marks. The reason why is because you don't want pastel dust falling down in that bevel and showing right there. So a reverse bevel is only flipping it around, so the pastel dust falls behind it. 
So we want to make sure this is very, very clean. Okay, so I'm going to get my kneaded eraser and clean that very good before I put my painting in. Okay, so we want to get our painting positioned in here nicely. And it does not fit this board. I did not mount this. So this is working with an unmounted piece of artwork. And unfortunately, my board is a little warped too. I gotta smush it down here. All right, so let's see where this mat lines up. And I'm gonna kind of look, I really, want, I would like my signature to show in it, but I want it down as much as possible. All right, so let's see about like right in here. I wish my UART paper had not warped. Okay, so that's kind of nice right there. I need to move it over just a tad. Okay, now we want to get this as clean as possible. So, you can take the glass out if you like and do it, or you can do the fast method like I'm doing now to get this done. Now, this stuff does shed. Um, there are different things that you can use rather than a paper towel um, to keep the little dusty particles from getting on the glass, um, but usually I'm pretty good at getting it all off. Okay, when you have your painting in place and you have everything where you want it, then it is the time to use this point driver, okay? The Logan Dual Drive Point Driver. I just press it down a little bit because the foam is um, foam board is kind of flexible and you shoot, okay? And I usually put two per side. And I'm still careful with my painting because you know there is pastel dust. Uh, you want to be careful to get down far enough here to where you don't shoot out of the back of the frame here. So that's why I recommend pressing down a little bit. Plus it holds it more snugly in place. And again, if, if I wasn't just making a video rather quickly, I would peel all this off before putting my new uh, tape on and paper. All right, we have our points in place. All right, so now this is not moving, okay? So isn't that nice? Not moving around, we're all good. It's all clean and ready. Again, I would put a business card back here and I have a double-sided business card that I get from moo.com, M-O-O.com. It's a great place to order business cards um, because you can get various paintings on the back. You can order one set of cards and get all kinds of paintings. You don't have to have them double-sided. You can have just paintings. So I usually just put a card on the back. I would normally make this neater and everything. Make sure you put it, it doesn't really matter because it's going to be covered up, but I still like to put it where it's going to be right side up if somebody takes the painting apart, okay? So I've got my business card there. Now, we gotta put this dust cover on, which is the brown paper. It just looks like packaging paper. So how we're gonna do that is 
we're going to use the um, ATG gun again. Okay, so this gun is going to hold all of the tape that um, you use to adhere the paper to. All right, so adhesive tape gun. We're going to squeeze the trigger after we press it down, all right? So I'm gonna put it down. Sometimes the back of your frame is really wide and makes this easy, and sometimes it's really narrow. So you gotta pay attention to what you're doing here. Then you let go of the trigger as soon as you're ready to release it, okay? So turn it, push it down where you want it, pull the trigger, roll, keep the trigger pulled, roll, 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 let go. Again, oops, and be careful because you'll get your fingers on it. Press the trigger, roll it, let go. And I've got one more time to do this. Press the trigger, roll it. Okay, there we go. So we've got our tape in place from our ATG gun. Now we're gonna do the um, dust cover paper, which is the brown paper like this that comes in the rolls. It'd be nice if this was the right size, right? <laughs> that never happens. Okay, well I shouldn't say never. Sometimes it, it works out just great. All right, so I'm gonna cut a piece of this larger than I need, okay? That looks about wide enough, so let me cut it larger than I need. Okay, so we have our dust cover paper. You do not have to worry about cutting it exactly to the size. That would be so hard, right? So when it's rolled up like this, you just let it roll up, and then we're going to go over each side of it and go a little past, kinda, kinda even so you, you know, don't have it all crooked when you roll it out. And then we're literally just going to roll it down the sides here. Okay, and now I like to take it and go ahead and press down the edges so I can see where I'm working. Okay, now I'm going to use my dust cover trimmer. Also can be bought um, on Amazon and the company, the Logan company makes one of these too. It does not look like this one that I have. It's a different one. It's about $15. All right, but with mine, I press the plastic against the side of the frame. I press down and make a, a good, um, decent cut there and you do it around every side. And look at this, isn't that nice? Lovely, 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 lovely. Now, we have, I pressed a little hard there. We have a framed painting. Look at that, so nice. And then it's all nice and clean. It's ready to go. It's not going anywhere. And we just have to um, decide what we're gonna do to the back of it. Now, again, there are different ways to do this, but often um, places that are galleries or wherever you're showing your work may not allow you to use these little guys, these little claw guys that you put on the back. I can't remember the names of them, okay? I can use these at home, and you wanna use one that's substantial enough. Uh, they make one a little heavier duty than this if you were gonna use it at home. If the painting's not so heavy and you're hanging it on your own wall, that's fine, but um, make sure it's heavy duty enough um, to hold up your artwork. It's not gonna fall out of the wall. Now, how you do this, it's kind of um, easy. You just basically, Measure your painting, okay? Find a halfway point, put this at the halfway point. It's got a nice little point for the halfway point, okay? And then all you do is hammer these in, obviously come down low enough to where it's not gonna show on the opposite side. Hammer it in, and then you can also put little teeny nails in here um, that will hold it even better, okay? So you're pretty much guaranteed. Now, if it's for more professional use, you're going to need to use 
the, um, I, I have other sizes, this one might be a little big, but you're gonna need to use these um, to hang a wire on the back. And the way I typically do them is I measure down to make sure they're on the same side or the same distance down. Um, I use these little screws to screw these in, okay? Holds it nice and snug. And then you use your wire, you get a little, uh, any needle nose pliers usually has a little wire cutter in the back of it. And you take your wire, you feed it through, um, leaving a little bit on this side and you cut it to where you have enough on this side to wrap around. And I'm not gonna go through the technique of you know, how I wrap the wire, but there's different ways you can wrap it just so it's nice and snug and uh, a clean cut so it looks nice and clean on the back like that professional one that I showed you to begin with. Then again, you can also, if you would like, take some of the hardware um, for your client, if you like, and some of these with the nail and the little doodah, and you can package it up and tape it on the back of the wire if you wanna look like a professional framing shop. You know, usually people can figure this out and get one of these on their own, but that's totally up to you if you wanna go the extra mile um, with all those things or not. So that's basically it for getting it framed. And again, you might wanna do something more and go ahead and sign your piece here. Um, put a date on it if you like. Sometimes if you have your artwork in a show, they require something else on the back of your painting. So um, I, I don't focus on doing a lot of shows because my life is so crazy, um, but maybe one day I will and then I will do all those things. <laughs> so this again is a great way if you don't do a lot of framing is to have a basket or a place you can keep all of this put away so you know it's not just hanging out in your studio you know taking up clutter if you have a little studio like mine now i keep this out not in this basket because i use this all the time all right let's set our painting over here because i use this tool all the time for packaging up my paintings in the clear bags. By the way, one of my patrons, if you sign up to, come, be, to become a patron before January 31st, I'm going to ha be having a drawing on February 3rd to give this little painting away. It was one I did in a demo and um, uh, someone can win this painting if you become a patron. All of my patrons are eligible, but any, even if you're a new patron before January 31st, you'll be eligible for the drawing. And you still have to be a patron by February 3rd when I do the drawing, but somebody's gonna win this cute little painting. But anyway, this tool is the one that I use to, uh, oh yeah, also too, on the back of this one, I included the sketch and I included my business card, okay? So, and if you ever do a sketch of your work, it's a good idea to go ahead and include it, you know, unless you really don't like it. <laughs> so um, these are the foam boards that I cut with this cutter to go behind all of my little paintings. This was another demo I did. Um, and by the way, I added more glittery sparklies to these with the um, iridescent pastels. So anyway, um, make it look neat, make it look professional, and you know, take the extra steps um, to do that, and it'll really, really make a difference when you're selling your artwork. You'll look professional, people will recommend you, and uh, if it's big enough, I include my pastel paintings and framing tips on the back and a business card. Okay, now once again, I know I've shared this a lot about these little clear bags I use. These are handy dandy for having in your studio. If you're gonna keep your artwork around, you can touch it, you can hold it. If somebody wants to buy it, you can ship it out in these. Um, you can take it to little shows and have these in baskets where people can hold your art. Some, and it's a lot more affordable than framing every single piece and a lot less bulky. There, you have plenty of room in your studio to keep these versus framing every single painting. Now, again, where do I get these clear bags? I used to use um, this company, um, Crystal Seal, uh, and they were more expensive. They're really nice bags, but they were more expensive. Since then, I've been ordering them. I think that might even be the same bag, but I ordered it from a, a company called clearbags.com. It doesn't say it on the bag anywhere but you get a whole lot more. There's 109 by 12 bags in here, and I can't remember what I paid, but it was not bad at all. 
Now, on the site, the clearbags.com site, it takes a little while to find the bags that you need, um, but I'll try to give a little link in the about section of this video to get to where you need. And then you've got to order, you know, the right bag. Okay, so there's a couple of different ways to order these. This one has the um, adhesive on the top part of the bag. And a lot of people um, like it this way, but some people like it where the adhesive is here um, so that if you're um, if you remove the adhesive you can take art in and out without it sticking I actually like it here because I don't really take my art in and out of the bag I put it in the bag with this on it so I don't have a problem with that okay so I put it in here and then I take the uh, and I have a video where I show you how to slide it in I have a technique where I blow the bag so that when I slide it in, my artwork doesn't smear all the way down it. But then you peel this off and you fold it over. Sometimes if the painting's a little smaller, I might have to make it more snug. Um, but anyway, the reason I like it there and not here is when the seal is here, um, sometimes I take it off just to do a little something, put a card in, and this is always sticking all over my hand. So I prefer the adhesive on the top part of the bag, okay? So that's the company, www.clearbags.com, all kinds of different sizes. That's another reason working in standard sizes is good because you can find standard sizes to fit your paintings. This was not a standard size, so I had to, you see how I had to fold the bag over? It's doable, very achievable, but if you work in a standard size, it fits the bag perfectly. And again, cut a piece of foam core board to put in the back. Okay, so I, that was a lot of info, and I gotta tell you, I'm gonna have to edit this video like crazy because I had so many phone calls during that process, and I gotta clean up fast because I gotta cook dinner. All right, guys, happy painting.